Hey guys, what's up? Nando Costa here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like, share with your friends. We have a lot of cool things to talk about here. If I'm a new face to you, my name is Nando Costa. I'm a music producer, mixing master engineer. I'm from Brazil, but now I'm living here in the US, Los Angeles. And my goal here is to start producing more content in English from now on. Uh, so far, I think I've posted over like 200 or something videos on YouTube, but everything is in Portuguese so far. Uh, from now on, we're going to start uh, talking more about music production, mixing and mastering in English. So I hope I can help you guys out with some cool ideas, tutorials. Please feel free if you have any comments, suggestions, ideas for topics so I can cover here. We have a lot of things to discuss of this beautiful universe, which is the audio and the music production. So in this first video, I'm going to show you a little bit of my studio here in Los Angeles. It's a studio I put together with my friend, uh, Smiley Shan, who also uh, engineers for uh, Tommy Lee, Motley Crue's drummer Tommy Lee. He works at his studio in Calabasas here in Los Angeles. We decided to put this room together so we could have our uh, own space to work uh, in mixing and mastering. Uh, we have a lot of cool stuff here that we've been using um, in our own productions, in our mixes. And I'm gonna go over a little bit the equipment, the way we set up the room, uh, the connections, some cool stuff to share with you guys. I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. So this is our right rack here on the desk. Uh, this is our brain. Everything here in the studio is connected on this side of the desk. We have here our patch bay, which is where uh, we route all the signals here on the studio from one equipment to the other. And it's very efficient uh, for mixing. Uh, now we are applying this to the mastering too, which is a pretty good way of working with all the gear we have here. I'm going to show you a little later uh, a little bit of the details we have there. This is the main converter, the Lynx Aurora 16. We have 16 ins and outs in the analog realm, and we also have uh, digital connections. In this one, we have the AES-CBU. I think there's an extra card you can switch it up if you wanna use, uh, let's say, EDAT connections. Here we have the Apogee, the Symphony IO, which is the older model, is a very good converter. In this one, we have eight ins and eight outs analog and also eight ins and eight outs digital through EDAT. Here's the thing, these are our main interfaces, but they are not connected directly together to the computer. So we are connecting the links to the computer through Thunderbolt, but here's the tricky thing. We have a limitation with the Apogee. Actually, the Apogee can work in USB mode, in Pro Tools HD mode if you have a Pro Tools card, and also it works in standalone mode. So here's the thing, when you select the USB mode, which is the most common for most of people who are using this with the computer, uh, you can't have an external clock. So that's the problem because we need to use the same clock for both interfaces. And I was trying to find a solution for this. I was like, maybe the best solution for this would be to have a third interface just to get the signals digitally from the Apogee into this new interface and then this interface to the computer. And then in the computer, we can create what we call the aggregate device, which is a, like a digital device, a digital new device that combines both interfaces. So that's the way we did this. And to achieve this, we are using another, a third interface, which is the UAD Apollo, which is right there in the other rack we have just to get the signals from the Apogee into the computer. And this way, we put the Apogee in the standalone mode. So when it's in standalone mode, we can uh, actually use the clock we have here to lock all the three interfaces together so we don't have any digital issues. So basically here we have the Antelope Isochrone clock, which is a very good clock. It locks the sample rate of all the interfaces we have here. So, uh, it has a very good quality. So now, basically, we are using 24 ins, 24 outs in analog, so we can play around with summing, 
uh, inserts in the mix. It's a very good setup. And we also are using some inputs from the Apollo since it's connected directly to the computer. So we are using some preamps, line ins and stuff like that. Okay, down here we have a couple of 500 series devices. We have a preamp. This is a Great River Electronics. It's a very clean preamp. Uh, I've been using this uh, to record some videos here. It's a very transparent preamp. We have these two preamps here, Chandler, the TD2. They are very good. They are good for mid-range stuff, guitars, uh, more aggressive vocals. They are very good. We have here the Little Devil Equalizers by Chandler as well. They have a very warm sound. Uh, we have here high, uh, high mids, low mids and lows. We have a couple different options here. They are very effective for mixing. Here we have the mag. Uh, these EQs are really fantastic. This model is the EQ2. It has just two bands, highs and lows. Uh, I use mostly the highs. It has the air band. This is really famous. It sounds really good for high end. So I, I like to use especially on the vocals, backing vocals, anything that you want to emphasize the high end. This one is very good. I've used a couple of times with the low end too, but particularly uh, for my ears, the high end is very good. This one is the West Audio uh, bus compressor. It resembles a lot the SSL bus compressor. If you take a look here on the parameters, like the attack and the release, it has like the same uh, characteristics. Actually, it's more complete than the SSL because you have more options here. You have uh, the 1.5 ratio, which is good for mastering if you're using this guy for mastering. You also have the sidechain filter, which we don't have in the SSL, uh, the original SSL model. Uh, it's good because you can connect a USB cable here. You can actually change the settings in the app uh, on the computer. So it's very good for recall. So this is the left rack we have here on the desk. We start with an 1176 replica. It's a very nice compressor to use on vocals. Anything that you want color, you want to emphasize a color, you can do a lot of uh, energetic sound with this. So particularly I've been using a lot on vocals. It's very nice, especially on lead vocals. So it's very nice. Here we have the Kush Audio Clarophonic. It's a parallel equalizer. Uh, it's a very nice touch uh, in the high end. So whenever you have a mix that you can bring up a little bit more the high end energy, you can emphasize a little bit more, this equipment is very good. And actually I combined this guy with the Dangerous BX EQ, which is my main equalizer. I've been using the Dangerous for many years, mostly in the mastering, but also you can use in the mix bus. I use it now all the time in the mix bus. And sometimes in the mix bus, I combine this guy with the Clarophonic. It's a very good combination, especially in songs that you need to emphasize a lot the high end. So it's very subtle. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Actually, the Dangerous is a very subtle EQ. Of course, you can boost it up a lot. You can cut a lot, but it sounds smooth. It's not aggressive. So you can use uh, really well in the mix bus and for mastering. I have here the API 2500. It's a great compressor for many applications. I've been using this guy mostly for master bus in the mixing and also for mastering. It has a lot of options. You can color the sound a lot. And at the same time, you can get a very clean sound if you use, for instance, with the ratio 1.5 here, which is pretty smooth, like for mastering. You can also use it smooth for mixing, but when I'm mixing I'm using 4.1, I, I want it more aggressive. But for mastering, 1.5 is very good. You can play around with the sidechain filter here. Uh, you have different settings for knee, a thrust that you alter the shape of the side chain. You also can change the architecture you can use in feedback or feed forward. It's a very nice equipment to have in your setup. This guy I've been using for, I think, like three or four years, which is the Manly Variable Mew. It's a nice piece of gear to have in your studio. I've been using mostly for mastering, but also uh, for mixing is very good. It's a lot warmer than the API. 
The API deals better with transients and if you want to uh, have like a clear sound, the API is a little better. This is not the mastering version because the mastering version comes with the sidechain filter. This one doesn't have the sidechain filter, but you have access to all the parameters, individual threshold, attack, release, uh, gain, input gain and output gain. Uh, and actually you can use like both uh, the Melly and the API, you can also use for individual tracks, you can use for vocals, for drum buses and anything you have in mind. They work great, but for the workflow I have here, basically I choose these guys to do the master, let's say the master texture of the song. So basically whenever I'm using these guys, I put them either in the mix, but I mean the master bus in the mixing or for mastering itself. And now you can see our external rack here. Uh, in the external rack, we have the actual summing mixer, which is a Chandler uh, summing mixer. Really nice, really great sound uh, to add the analog texture to your mixes. And we have down here two preamps also by Chandler. These are the models used in the Abbey Road boards. You can take a look there, there's the Abbey Road logo in there, the RAD 47. Really nice preamps. Actually, I'm recording my voice now through this preamp here. It has a very warm sound. So basically to use the summing here is very straightforward. We don't have to do anything special. We have the volume control for each channel. So basically we have one, two, three, and four. We have 16 channels of summing. So basically it's a board, it's a mixer. We don't have EQ, we don't have compressor or anything. We just have the circuits. So basically we just route the signal through the circuit here to get the warmth, the analog sound. And then everything is summed together we have the stereo out there going back to the interface. But uh, if you wanna change anything here, we have pan control and volume control for each one of the 16 channels. This version is also modified. We have two uh, transformers on this one. We have the original Chandler transformer and also we have an API transformer. So if you want different colors in a mix, in a particular mix, we can switch up the transformer. We have two separate outputs in the back. So basically we can take out a stereo output from the mixer with the Chandler sound and a stereo output with the API sound in case we need to play around and you know choose the best sound for the song. So basically that's it. We don't have to do a lot of stuff. We just send the signal through here. We get the, the output, the stereo output back into Pro Tools and record it. So that's the way it works. So one last detail I wanted to share with you guys is about the patch base, just to show you how we connect everything in here. It's very straightforward. Basically uh, in a patch bay, um, you have the outputs on the top, the inputs on the bottom. We have here um, the outputs from the Aurora, 1 through 16, and then the Apogee, 1 through 8. So our outs are always here, so 1 through 24. These first 16 outputs are normal to the summing mixer. When we say that the connection is normal, uh, this means that you have the link without the need of patching a cable here. So when we have here from 1 through 16, the signals go directly to the summing mixer. So we don't need to patch any cable here. We have the summing from, let's say, out 3 to the summing mixer, out 4 to the summing mixer, and so on. So this makes our work uh, easier. We don't have to patch everything. We just need to patch cables here when we need inserts in the mix, or either the mix or the master. So let's say we have here Apogee out 3. If we need to insert this in Pro Tools like a plugin, basically just patch this cable into whatever equipment we are using here. Now we are plugging this into Mag. We just pick up Mag out, go back to Apogee in 3. As long as we have the same number, the same input and the same output, we can insert this as a plugin in Pro Tools. So that's the way we basically work here in the studio. If you have any questions, suggestions, topics for me to raise here and to cover, please leave here in the comments and we're going to talk a lot about music production, audio. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.